Some call this entertainment, others says it only promotes violence. But for decades, the WWE has captivated millions of fans worldwide with its larger-than-life characters who face off in the ring. Real as the fighting may seem, it's actually all make-believe. Everything's all choreo uh, choreographed, in case you didn't already know. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's the appeal of the WWE, even though everyone knows that the action is scripted? Well, we can find out more this morning because we have WWE superstar John Morrison and WWE diva Melina. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Yeah, welcome to the show. This is the peel of WWE right here, by the way. Oh. Melina. <laughs> yeah. It happens anyway. You've got to have a hot babe somewhere, yeah, right? Go. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us why is it that, um, you know, um, fans continue watching and supporting, you know, WWE despite knowing that it's all scripted? I would say it's the same reason that people watch movies or rock concerts. You know, it's it's an experience. It's entertainment. And um, when when I was a kid, I was I was hooked on on Macho Man and Shawn Michaels, the larger than life aspects, the music, the pyro, the excitement. And um, I stayed hooked my whole life, and this is why I ended up doing what I do. And I, I think that's why uh, people get into it. How long have you guys been doing this? Ooh. Yeah. We actually debuted together yeah? as Eminem in 2005. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Melina, Johnny Nitro at the time, and Joey Mercury. Okay. Our okay. brother from another mother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Melina, how did you get involved in a sport? I heard you were influenced by your dad in some way. Oh yeah, my um, father used to be a boxer, so he he influenced me on in being um, I guess the fighter and also in the athletics. Mm. So I was always athletic all my life, and then when um, I got older, I kind of loved wrestling, but I never thought I'd be able to do it. So I fell into it by just doing it for conditioning. Mm. And I got scouted and I thought, wow, well, maybe I could do this. So I kept <laughs> trying to pursue it. What and about yourself, John? How did you get into it? Um, you know, I was, I was a big fan growing up. I wanted to be just like Hulk Hogan when I was a kid, mm. except with more hair. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> as, as I grew up, though, I, uh, I kind of stopped thinking of it as a, as a possibility until I saw a show called Tough Enough, which is actually just come out again now the uh, like the revitalization of tough enough but um this was back in 2003 i was going to the university of california and i saw tough enough and i thought like i've got to figure out what i want to do with my life and here's this show it's what i wanted to do ever since i was a kid to be a to be a pro wrestler to be a sports entertainer mm -hmm. and this is how you do it tough enough mm -hmm. so i uh, yeah. auditioned for the show and i ended up making it on the show winning the show and getting a developmental contract okay. with wwe so give us a bit of yeah. insight into the industry you know like are you guys Friends, like, you know, outside of the ring, what's Vince McMahon yeah. like? Is he really like, you know... Is Do you actually like each other? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is on tape, right? So, where's the... Vince yeah. McMahon is a wonderful human being. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like eye contact when you Vince, Vince McMahon would love to come back to Singapore as soon as possible. Unfortunately, <laughs> R-Truth and The Miz don't like this place. I don't know if you guys know those guys. No. <laughs> Talking all kinds of crap about Singapore. Oh, we man. We love Singapore. Yeah. Oh. Okay, okay. So <laughs> only you two so should ever come uh, back to Singapore, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't want everybody to come back. But as far as um, some, some insight as to what goes on, I, I sometimes yeah. think WWE, you can compare it to high school a little bit. Because, oh. you know, you, you have your cliques and your, your people that you hang out with. But there's everybody at the school, some people you don't like as much as others, mm. but you have to get along. You know, you're all these, these fish in this fishbowl called the WWE, and um, we have to swim together. So, like, Melina, how do you stay, like, Miss Popular, like, you know, so that you are the, you know, you are the it girl that they want to push and promote and, you know, sort of she get you out there. She was the homecoming queen in high school. <laughs> oh, yeah. <that's> <laughs> well, I don't know. See, to me, it's not always a set thing. I, I just stay true to myself and who I am and do what I love and it's just been working for me. So I, I don't know if it's supposed to be for advice or if there's like a secret that I do, but it's just... So, so what does it take to, you know, to actually um, be on that ring like? What sort of qualities do you need? I mean, obviously besides being in good fit condition. I would think tough, being tough emotionally and physically, um, athletic and just having an it factor and a presence. Because the thing is also, I mean, we've seen you guys on screen and now that we meet you, personalities are quite different. You know, people expect that. I'm sure when you meet the audience, the public, and they kind of expect you to be like you are on stage, you know, and they kind of... Absolutely. You know, I can't tell you how many, how many times we've been, like, shopping or at a restaurant and, like, um, someone will be like, Hey, Melina, do the splits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, like, oh, do, uh, do, do Star uh, Champagne. Do your... <laughs> at Applebee's? Come on, like, kid. Like, can't do that. Yeah. But there, there's, there's a big difference between um, who we are in, in real life as real people and, and who we are on screen. That what you see on screen is us with the, 
I'm watching Melina right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just cracking me up. With the volume turned all the way up because WWE is larger than life. That's what hooked me as a kid, and I think that's the beauty of it now. It's, it's family entertainment, and the larger than life aspects are meant to be something that kids can identify with and have fun with. Parents can go and bring families closer together. I mean, I remember asking my dad millions of questions about the Bushwhackers and the Ultimate Warrior when I was a kid. Yeah. And to this day, it's a memory going to WWE Live that we still laugh about. Well, we got to jump to that question a little bit about family entertainment because okay. some people think otherwise. It kind of feels a bit too, well, it's a bit too realistic sometimes. You, you can't tell what's real, what's fake, you know. It is dangerous because right. you get and injured the moves, from yeah. the sport. Yeah. The, 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 moves, uh, the moves are dangerous, which is why it's so important that um, you only try it if you're professionally trained, which everybody on the WWE roster is. And it's so important that you don't try anything you see on TV at home because, <laughs> I mean, Melina and I and everybody that we work with has spent years and years um, perfecting our craft, learning how to do sports entertainment. Yeah. And um, as, as far as it being uh, too violent and, and a bad example, I think it might have been more so like that in the 70s and 80s, but now WWE has evolved into a PG atmosphere. Um, there's no sway, swear words, there's no, uh, there's no homophobic or racist slurs or insults. WWE is geared now towards families. And um, I think if you compare it to other forms of entertainment that are out there, movies, guns, people getting shot, um, video MMA, games, yeah. video games, I think you'd find that WWE is a lot less violent than those other forms of entertainment. Now you guys have a huge, I mean, fan base clearly. So maybe you'd like to tell us what is like the craziest thing like a fan has, you know, done for <laughs> for you. Oh my goodness, there's been so many. <laughs> <laughs> the go. best one. Oh. I can't, because you put me on the spot, so I can't remember. <laughs> uh, all I know is I remember um, I had a kid who came um, came up to me and he asked for an autograph on his forehead. Oh. Okay. And I didn't think, I was like, no. That's, that's Steven yeah. off the show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was, that was Steven when we walked in. <laughs> didn't want to embarrass you on camera. Sorry, sorry. No. We, kinda, <laughs> we did it on the back after all, so. All we had is a permanent marker, so I didn't. <laughs> and yourself, um, Remember that time we were in the airport in Dallas? And um, we went to a Starbucks and I ordered a Frappuccino. Oh, yeah. And then I was like <laughs> drinking my Frappuccino and I, I walked into the bathroom and the guy that sold the Frappuccino followed me into the bathroom. Oh, creepy. Yeah. And then um, I, was, I put the thing on the toilet and I was going to the bathroom at the, at the airport and this guy's kind of like tapping me on the shoulder. He's like, John Morrison, John Morrison. I was kind of like, yeah. He's like, can I have your autograph? I was like, I'm kind of busy right now. He's yeah. like, well, just, I mean, when you're done, I'm like, um, this is kind of awkward. He's like, hey, uh, is anybody else here? Is Randy Orton here? He's like, you in, in the bathroom? Yeah. yeah it's so weird. But, I mean, that's just one. Stuff like that happens all the time. And he you gotta, you gotta laugh at it. you in the bathroom. He kind of just followed you to, he would have followed you wherever you went. You know, yeah, so. yeah, exactly. He just, he just wanted to talk to me. I think he was waiting for me to stop walking. Which is not a good time. Yeah, it's... Uh, Fans, when we're, when we're in the bathroom, please, please let us have a moment's peace. Yeah. <laughs> Use a cubicle room, sir. But... <laughs> yeah, I might have to. But those, those, Melina, you are famous for those splits. I mean... Uh... <laughs> yes. <laughs> the splits yes. on the screens. Yeah, I mean... Uh... <laughs> is that that's become your, your trademark thing? I mean, uh, yeah. growing up, I guess you that that must be hard to also keep uh, flexible in that sense. I'm just thinking as we get older, somehow the joint zone bend quite as. Uh, guys, I mean, you guys have to exercise <laughs> every day, especially for dudes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why we're not talking about us doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a full-time job because yeah. you have to stay fit 24 7 watch your diet you know all that sort of stuff so Melina just run us through like a typical day when you're trying to w what is your exercise like well, routine like the ideal day if I have a full amount of time is definitely because I love cardio and I, I always want to do it first even though it's best to do it last in my opinion but I always do like at least 20 minutes of cardio to 30 minutes of cardio and then do some um, weight lifting and then warm up a little bit and then stretch Cause and, oh, and John, very quickly, you do parkour, right? Because I read in a magazine like parkour. last year, yes, yeah, which is like a freestyle running. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, parkour is the art of movement, and it's uh, I think not only a great way to stay in shape, but a lot of fun. It's like uh, what Jackie Chan was doing in his movies back before it was called parkour, and now it's kind of spread like wildfire. Parkour is really in vogue. It's really like yeah. in right now. Is that a great workout? Oh yeah, it's it's yeah, absolutely sure. it's it's. It's a great workout. You get stronger, and all the little muscles, the stabilizers okay. and stuff that you can't work out in the gym, you can work out doing parkour. You know, you know, parkour sounds a lot like uh, pak tor, which is a local term <laughs> yeah. for for like dating, dating and kind of making out. So anyhow, parkour, <laughs> parkour <laughs> pak tor. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 
All right, guys, thanks so thanks much guys. for coming thanks in. Thanks for having us. Have a great stay in Singapore. We will. <laughs> there we have it. WWE superstars John Morrison and Melina just telling us why the WWE still retains its appeal after all these years, and you can clearly tell why they're such yeah, charismatic people. Yeah, they are indeed. You can catch all the action in the WWE experience every Friday at 11 p.m. on Mediacorp's Channel 5.